Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. And yes, we are back, finally, with another chapter of One Piece. And you know, this is a serious return, for I am wearing a shirt again. I don't know why I said that, but I did. Please, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe for more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at The Messy Pieces. Same name as this good old channel. And let us go for chapter 979 of its name, Family Problem. And I gotta say that this cover story just took a turn for the worst. At least for me, when I saw the, the early spoilers and the early translations, and I saw the cover page, at first I was like, why is there a dart here? Like, at first I thought, but the fire tank pirates are not, don't have a dart anymore. They, they changed it for another ship, I, I think. But then I saw the mass that is the body that comes with the tart. And I was like, wait a second. It's Pound. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Pound. It's freaking Pound. Lola and Chiffon's father is freaking alive. Honestly, I don't know why we are surprised anymore. Like, Oda doesn't kill anyone, apart from, like, big names in the series or flashbacks. Like, to this date, the only characters outside Whitebeard and Ace that are yet to be deconfirmed dead are Virgo Monet, and Pedro, I guess. There might be others, but big ones, as in as in big ones. So the Tantatas are returning from the Reverie. And it's funny because we don't see any other ships from Dress Rosa. We just see the Tantata ship. Which I'm I don't know, could mean that they are just going up ahead as sort of the as sort of the front row escort or maybe they went before them or after because they are supposedly pirates but the main point of this covers of this volume is pound honestly i was so disappointed when i saw that pound is alive because he is alive, otherwise he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to board himself on a tart and just drift away from Whole Cake Island to freaking Dress Rosa. And that's freaking far away. Like we we don't know specifically how long. I, I don't actually remember how long it is. I'm genuinely pissed off about this cover, really. Because it took the straw hats. Like what? A week or so to get from Dress Rosa to Zo, And then how many more days from Zo to, to Whole Cake? Like, let's account that to two weeks. Tops. Let's account it to two weeks. One week and a half, maybe. One week and a half. Pound has been adrift for one week and a half. All the way from freaking Whole Cake Island to Dress Rosa. Like, I know this is one piece and this is a work of fiction. We, we, we can't take these things as literally as we would take in our real world. But explain to me how Pound, a significantly human human with no specific traits of superhuman ability, no devil fruit, no, no superhuman ability of the sword, managed to survive a strike from one of the oldest sons of Big Mom, a Devil Fruit user from Point Black. 
like sure I know there was cert there was a certain controversy there was a certain controversy surrounding his death back in the day but honestly I the only thing I can hope is that Oda doesn't pull the same for Pedro like I don't want to get 10 chapters down the line chapter 989 or something and we are at Wano and all of a sudden Pedro appears like because Pound okay we we can forgive Pound for surviving Pound will be another Papag from Skype here. He'll just be the guy that survived the attack from a Devil Fruit user and he'll be like, oh, I guess I survived. But still, I'm not happy with this. I don't enjoy it as a narrative resource. Oda has been pushing this ever since freaking Whiskey Peak. That was the first time that happened. Freaking Whiskey Peak. And Whiskey Peak is like early 2000s or or even late late 90s whiskey peak was eons ago and oda has been using this resource ever since honestly <sighs> this cover was not doing it for me and it's it's just stopped doing it for me again because this pound being alive makes no sense whatsoever and doesn't have anything to the story other than to provide a happy ending for Lola Chiffon and Pound. And probably Pound, uh, Pound and Chiffon and Lola will reunite, obviously. And I don't know, maybe Lola and her crew will join Beggy's crew and Pound will as well. And they'll be a merry family all around. And we'll see the, the Risky Brothers, that's the name, I forgot their name last time. And, the, and we'll see probably one cover page with the Risky Brothers dressed as mafiosos. And that will be it, Pound as well with a suit and whatnot. And, and the final volume of this cover story will, will be all of them, all the main members. Uh, Beji, um, Chiffon and Pez, Lola, the Risky Brothers and Pound, and Vito and Goatee all dressed up and at the head of the new Nostra Castello ship probably or whatever the whatever their ship name will be maybe maybe Lola has a ship and she'll offer that ship to to Beggio. oh this is my ship but since I'm getting together with you and marrying your one of your guys go to you can have the ship and and yeah we'll all be happy together and they'll get the ship from Wait, isn't Lola's ship... I'm losing way too much time on the cover story, I know, but this just occurred to me. Isn't Lola's ship the Rumbar Pirates' sh uh, ship? Because they fled Thriller Bark with it, didn't they? I guess they did, because Frankie fixed it up. So, wow, imagine, if this happens as I think it will... Benji could end up with the Rumbar Pirates ship. Imagine that. But anyway, I... But enough of the cover story. This cover story, I'm done with it. So yeah, we get a small, we get a small introduction with Orochi. Just detailing... Oh, he's been very keen on these details lately. He's fooling around with some Beast Pirate ladies i imagine and probably some geishas as well it's just fooling around thinking everything's fine he thinks that the that the samurai are all dead but of course he but of course they aren't little does he know that kinemon is going from the east denjiro is going from the south and with a manpower that exceeds five thousand men they are on their way we see once again lost submarine carrying the remaining samurai and again law with the straight up closed face this time we don't even see his eye, his eye line we just i'm sorry for doing this but the weather has changed and i'm just all over the place with my allergies but so yeah we get small map of onigashima again detailing the 
detailing the um, the orientation of the forces. One thing that I'm really confused about is, like, if the Jiro is going to the south and Kinemon is going to the east, then, I mean, shouldn't if if Denjiro is going south, shouldn't Kinemon be going north? Because it's north, south, west, and east, right? We have this mnemonic in Portuguese uh, with regards to the east and the west, because in Portuguese, well, even in no, but in Portuguese, the e of east, est in Portuguese, we. We think of it as Spain, because Spain in Portuguese is, is spelled España. So, E is for Spain, so it's to our right side. And then we have the Atlantic Ocean, so the O of West. So we know that West is for the side of the ocean, and East for the side of Spain. So I know my cardinal points. So yeah, it should be North, South, East and West. So if Denjiro is going South, Kinemon should be going North. Or if Kinemon is going east, then Jiro should be going west. I don't know if this is if this was already like this in the other chapters or if it's just a typo. It could be a typo or it could be just me completely forgetting what happened on the last chapters. A very funny point is Kanjiro getting lost. Of course there had to be some some device to have Kanjiro not having given the, the news to Orochi yet, and that device is him being lost in the tunnels beneath Onigashima. Which is weird. Why is he using the tunnels and just doesn't go through the front gate, cause a small commotion, and Orochi will like, oh no, wait, wait, no, stop, stop the commotion, that, that's our guy, don't, just let, just let him in, no problems, no problems. I understand that this is to give them time, but if he was to be smart, Kanjiro should just just flown in, right through the front gate, and just be like, Sup! I'm here, the samurai are coming, stop the banquet, we gotta fight them now. They have all the people they need, and they're coming, so let's go. And the big spiders will be like, wait, who are you? You're a samurai, let's kill you. And then a commotion would be caused, probably Kanjiro would, would knock out some beast pirates as he did. But then Horoshi will be like, oh, what's, what's going on? And he will be like, okay, so no, that's my guy, that's my guy. So, but no, of course, Kanjiro has to be lost for things to progress smoothly. Momonosuke eyes a knife and he thinks, oh, I should get that knife and stab me in the back. But it seems to be a little tied up. So I can't imagine him having much room to, to wiggle around, but we'll see. Okay, we see the FRU for the Black Rhino and the Brachio Tank 5 again, so I guess this means that we'll see General Frankie, the, the Frankie Shogun again. So Frankie is riding with it and Chopper is riding the, the Brachio Tank. There's a bit of a banter around the, the around these around these things. They explain that Luffy went ahead because of because of Kid and then and then Zoro end up ended up going after Luffy because Luffy went after Kid. So uh, short story long long story short actually <laughs> they all got separated. Like Kid is nowhere to be found. Luffy will see at the end of the chapter. He is around the main forces and Zoro God knows where Zoro is. So yeah. And they all admit, yeah, Luffy is only going to make things worse and Zoro is only going to get lost. Yeah, I find this moment with Sanji and trying to get into the Brachio tank very funny because Usopp is there because he's the only one that knows how to operate it. Chopper's on his head, just not feeling any spaces. And then Usopp is surrounded by Nami and Karen. And then she no in the back and Sanji's like, why do you get to be in heaven? And I'm like, okay, so... About only about three thirds of that is a heaven, but that's okay, that's fine by me. Then there's another fun scene with Frankie like trying to get Robin on the back of, uh, of the Black Rhino, and Brooke somehow mistakes the invitation and gets in on very quick. But 
Frankie doesn't even expel him, he just moves forward. I don't know. Uh, it's funny to see Robin with the little drop of like, really? Why? But yeah, she just decides to... She just decides to go... <laughs> and then Brooke is like, oh, Robin, come up here and sit with me. And she's like, no. Sanji's on the back of the Brachiothank inviting her. And we get to see, this is a cool scene. It's it's not much, but it's it's a scene that I think it's much needed and we should see more of it. And we, we sort of saw that in this chapter a lot. Jimmy interacting with the other members. Like, we had these bits before where, it, where, where he's explaining where Luffy actually went and how it happened. And, and the others just berate him and he's like, I'm just a messenger, guys. Sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's so funny to see him interact because he's the new member. Even though he has known them before, he is now officially a member. And we see probably the two most mature members of the crew just having a heart to heart. And it's fitting that it's them that go together. And... We see in the corner here someone rustling through the grass. I think that this is Kaido's son, Yamato. We got his name in this chapter as the spoilers indicated. I think this is Yamato. I saw some people debating whether it would be Yamato or Hawkins or even a new character, a different character. But given what happens in this chapter and what's talked about in this chapter, I believe, I solely believe that that's Yamato. And I don't know if by Observation Haki or something, we don't know how good with Observation Haki Jinbei and Robin are. So we don't know if they're going to get anything out of this. But I'm, I'm assuming that Jinbei and Robin will be the first ones to interact with Yamato. But we'll have to wait and see. And then the scene changes to a very awesome double page, which once again, Manga Jump, completely screwed over. You guys know me and Manga Jump and the um, and the double pages. They just they just screw them up so badly. Well, this is this is a great. I mean, this is the money shot of this chapter. Like all the Toby Ropo. And yes, I I was meant to say I I meant to say this. I gave it a lot of sass about the translation on Toby Robo, but apparently that's how Oda will start to address, is addressing them officially. And so all the translations, even the fan translations, I think, have started to adopt the, the Toby Robo. So Toby Robo is, is the canonical, even in the translation. And of course, the original, it is the, tra it is the original. So there will be no translation and the romanization for the translation is Toby Robo. So from henceforth, I, I'll i make this exception. So the Toby Ropo, I won't make exceptions with like Inuarashi or Nekomushi because I think that's just dumb. But that's me. Um, we see uh, Ulti and Page One interacting again. Kaido interacting with, with um, Takash? Sasaki. <laughs> I forgot his name, Sasaki. And we see, I this I will really love this. We see all of them from Black Maria to page one, to then Ulti, uh, who's who, Sasaki and X Drake, all the while being having Jack on on one side at Drake's end, and the other just being empty, but soon to be filled with um, with King. And we see Kaido just sitting down, cro legs crossed. And just, uh, yep, yeah, I'm here. I'm Kaido, just with his hand on a massive jug. And a massive jug of sake. Massive gourd of sake. And just going about the general plan. So he, he, retell, he tells them that he's planning on introducing them to Lilin, something we already knew. But that something happened. And, and he needs them to do something. So yeah, we find out that it wasn't actually Kaido who summoned them, but King in the name of Kaido. And this is very interesting, this is a very interesting detail about Kaido's crew, is that nothing is stationary. Like, normally with pirate crews, we see that... I mean, we kind of saw this with Big Mom and the Sweet Commanders, where Snack 
was demoted from Sweet Commander, but no one took his place. So we ended up only having three Sweet Commanders, whereas there were supposed to be four. So we kind of left that hanging. Well, would any other son take Snack's post or would Snack be promoted again? But in Kaido's crew, every anyone can achieve the post of lead performer, of all-star. And we already knew that the flying... <laughs> That the Toby Ropo, sorry, that it is gonna take some use to. That the Toby Ropo were the strongest of the headliners. So maybe we we find out that Sasaki and Who's Who were former pirate captains, much like the S Drake was. So maybe they started as normal headliners, and there was there were some Toby Ropo before, and they challenged those Toby Ropo, maybe killed them. And got their places but the point is they are gunning for the spots of lead performer now here's the thing Kaido will give them a chance provided they find his son Yamato now here's the thing I've been giving a lot of sass to, to Jack maybe not on video but on on a, on a daily basis, I've been giving a lot of sass to Jack, and a lot of people have been giving a lot of sass to Jack. The thing is, I don't think that Jack should or will lose to any of the Toby Ropo, because King and Queen, they won't lose. Queen, we saw that he's a strong dude. Like, sure, he got his ass handed by Big Mom, but come on, it is Big Mom. It's not someone else, it's Big Mom. King, we imagine that King is like just beneath Kaido. Like, to me at least, King is just beneath Kaido. Like, not this close, but as, as a representation. It's, it's, not like, it's, not like if, it's not like King could actually defeat Kaido. That's not what I'm saying. But in terms of hierarchy, King is just beneath Kaido. Just there just just there but if someone were to happen to kaido and the beast pirates were to continue i think that king would be the one to march forward and be the captain jack i want to say that jack is strong now we have the argument of well but he nearly got his ass handed to inuarashi and ekumamushi sure but Inuarashi and Nekomamushi are also strong as hell. Now, not to take any any credit from the Tommy Ropu, but I do not want, I wish that none of them can defeat Jack. Because if I'm thinking this this properly, if I was in Who's Who's or Sasaki's place, I would be gunning for the quote unquote weakest link. And what's the weakest link on the All Stars? It's apparently Jack. I'm not telling that Jack is stronger than King all along. But what I'm saying is that he may seem weak when compared to King and Queen, but he's not by any means weak. He is strong. He has yet to prove himself. It's just that him and Inuarashi and Nekomamushi are, all, are on a very different league. If they had worked together, and we saw... Inuarashi Nekomamushi just barely managed to hold him off through the day and through the night, separately. For six days in a row, Jack managed to hold his own against not one, but two of the rat scabbards consecutively, day and the night. I think we all forget this detail. A lot of times so something to keep in something to keep in mind and I will talk about this power dynamic a little bit more on my one of fights video that's still on the making but will be released probably next week because we won't have a chapter next week but we'll talk a bit more about that later so yeah apparently Uzu and Sasaki are gunning for the po for the post of lead performer I think they are the only ones that are doing it uh, page one doesn't have a chance. 
Um, page one is the new Jack for me, by the way, because I really think that is the weakest link of the of the Toby Ropo. Um, page one doesn't have a chance. Ulti and Black Maria, I don't think they are interested in that. Black Maria seems to thrive more on the you know just lay back and see the and see the show go to shit or something. Uh, the yes. S Drake we know is not interested because. He doesn't have a point, he's a marine. So Sasaki and Who's Who are the ones that are gunning for the post. And I and I really hope we get to see like one of them go against King and one of and the other one going against Jack and both bling, being obliterated. Like really obliterated. Not to the point to that they can't fight in the upcoming fight, but enough to just put them in their place. Because I don't think that Oda will mess up the organization at this point. This battle, I think, will just be to show both how powerful the All-Stars are and how powerful the Tobiropo are, but the All-Stars are still leagues above the Tobiropo. But anyway, Kaido summons yet another gifter that seems to be his personal secretary, Bao Wang, and she has an interesting quirk that at the end of certain sentences she just goes boom and just shouts the, the ending of the sentence. So her first sentence, the three lead performance and Fuku, Fukuroko Joe will be holding a toast! And then Shogun Roshi and Marshall Kaido will give a speech! And she just goes like that. And it's in terms of fact, I probably busted the audio and your eardrums and I'm sorry for that. I'll try to return to my melodic voice which is starting to get a little bit cranky because I am almost out of bread. But yes, the flying squirrel, smile fruit, animal, a beast, pirates, headline, a bow rank. So yeah, and she details the plan. So, point number one. After the Golden Festival stage by Queen, the three lead performers, the three all-stars, and Fukurokujo will hold us a toast. This makes sense because they are the highest authorities on both sides. Then, Orochi and Kaido will give a speech, probably just to commemorate yet another year of a successful alliance that made Wano Country a paradise. And then, the Big Mom Pirates ship will arrive, so indicating that Big Mom is, is on Onigashima, but the Queen Mama Shanter and the, and, the other, and the other guys are not there yet. So this will be interesting because what if they cross with, with some of the infiltrators? That'll be fun. Then Kaido and Big Mom will join together and formally announce this, their alliance. And then at the end, Kaido is gonna make a very important announcement. Now, I think that these two last points are related. We all know how Big Mom performs her alliances. And what I think is, she and Kaido will cement their alliance through a marriage. But not their marriage. Kaido will marry his son Yamato to one of Big Mom's daughters. Now, we don't know anything about Yamato, we don't know how young slash old he is. Like, he could be around his 20s, 30s. So we don't know, but one thing that I would find very, 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 very interesting was if Yamato were to be married to Pudding. Now, we don't know if Pudding is going to, is, is in Wano, but imagine, it has to be someone, if, if it's going, if there's going to be a marriage between Yamato and one of Big Mom's daughters, I think it has to be someone significant. It can't be Compot because Compot's probably already married. So, anyone before, like, I don't know, Gallet or Amand, I think it's off the table. So, it has to be afterwards. So, I don't know, maybe Josker Pawn, was it? Maybe Josker Pawn. Um, one of the of the, the couplets, not really because they're all a bit younger and all the girls are a bit younger and they none of them is noteworthy per se. That's Flampe. They could marry Flampe. I mean, sure, why not? 
I don't care. It's fun, uh, but no. One, the one I really would find interesting is Putin. Like, sure, it would be repeating the gag, but imagine, imagine if Yamato ends up being an enemy. There's, pe there's people thinking that Yamato could be an ally, but just imagine if Yamato ends up being an enemy. We have found Sanji's enemy, Yamato, because he would marry Pudding, and Sanji would be like, he will what? Excuse me? Ain't nobody gonna marry that piece of meat. No, I'm sorry. And it, ain't no one gonna marry that beautiful lady but me. Or, you know. Sanji would... Sanji would protect Pudding. If, not, if nothing else, because he has respect for her. And even though their marriage was... Not the most, you know, successful one and not made for the right reasons, a.k.a. love. The two of them bonded and developed a sort of a relationship that ended in a really stale note. Mainly because Putin, mainly because Putin just, she couldn't bear to have done all that and still pretend to be nice for him. I, what I think is she wanted to be happy with him. She wanted to feel happy with him, but she just did so much bad stuff that she decided, no, I don't deserve this, so I'll do this. But then again, that's very, that's very selfish if I think about it, because she kissed him and then she took the memory of the kiss and then only her, only she remembers the kids. So I guess my whole point falls to work now. Anyway, they bonded and that's what matters. And I think that if Yamato ends up being an enemy, which I strongly think he should be an enemy, I don't think we need, oh, oh an insider on the crew is actually gonna help the alliance. Uh... Uh, I bet you didn't see that one coming, did you guys? And you'll be like, yes, we kind of did. Oh, no, we kind of did. I'm sorry. And you'll be like, ah, no, you just blame me. You didn't see this coming. And we're like, yes, sorry, or the sensei, we actually did because you kind of did the same thing in the last arc. And you'll be like, oh, you guys are so funny. I love my readers. But yeah, I think Yamato should be an enemy, and that's that. So yeah, he tasks the Toby Roper to go find Yamato and if they do so they'll have a chance to fight against one of the all-star of their choosing and who's who is already excited because he really wants to fight one of the all-stars all right and then we see the end of the chapter Luffy has arrived to the main center stage of the of the banquet and he's just looking around trying to find Trying to find Kid, which he of course is not finding. But then he sees Fudi gets distracted, and then comes the moment of the change, and this is probably gonna be oof. Something's gonna happen, but I think he'll be stopped just at the right moment before doing anything stupid. Or maybe not. Someone throws a pot of Oshiruku. Because they think it's bad and they don't wanna eat it. And just because they did a lot for Big Mom, they now are serving it at the banquet. And the Beast Pirates are like, no, but we can't have that because that's too sweet. Just toss it away. Just give it to the people. Just toss it to, to the people of Okabori Town and they'll they'll slip it off the ground. And, and Luffy remembers Tama and when she ate Oshiroku for her birthday. And not even just the Yoshiroku, just when she ate the, um, the food they brought from the offering farm and how happy she was. And Luffy here is kind of... Because he's always been like this. It's, he's a fair person. so But he, here he's kind of... He's kind of impersonating Sanji. It's, it's fun to think how Luffy is the amalgamation of, of all his crew members. And the other and the crew members are like a personification of one of his aspects. Sanji being the one 
of not wanting to waste food. If Sanji was here, oof, Sanji would have kicked these guys all to kingdom come. He would have started a war in here. And Luffy's kind of doing the same because he knows what the people of Okobore Town, and not just Okobore Town, of old Wano country, feel and how they are left to starve with no food, no proper food, just being fed leftovers in measly conditions. Like, these guys are talking of just spilling the Yoshiroku in the town and having the people lick the floor just to get the food. So yeah, as the chapter closes, we see Luffy's pissed off face. He's either going to start just mumbling about everywhere or just going to release a burst of conquerors. Either way, if he ends up doing anything at all, he'll be found out. So we have two options here, three options. Either he'll restrain himself, he'll be restrained by someone else, or he'll just start a war. <laughs> and, and the plan will all go off the rails. And Luffy will just start fighting these guys and Queen is there and boom, maybe, maybe he'll fight Queen again, we don't know. But this could very well be the beginning of the Wano battle like way way before the time and just because Luffy is a fair guy so as I said a few moments ago there will be no chapter next week the next chapter will be let me check on the 24th of May so not next Sunday the one afterwards so next week next Monday a little bit earlier I hope I promise I'll try to do it we will have the much longer-awaited Wano fight video. I have some cool fights on my head. One of them, I'll give you a little spoiler, is Inorashi Nekomamushi versus Jack. I know this is not exactly rocket science, and there is a lot of people gunning for this fight and hoping that this fight happens, and I'm one of them. But I'll try to list some fights that I thought would be cool and the reasons why they would be cool, whether for revenge motives or whether just because the, the combatants themselves match with one another. So, my dear friends, my dear viewers, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, stick around until the end. I congratulate you and give you my thanks for having stuck with me. Please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I am hope to making a triumphant return now that my university is over and I'm on quote-unquote vacations. So please stay sharp and pay attention to the channel. Tomorrow something might drop that it's a little bit different. Yet another experiment that I'm doing to see where this channel floats and in which direction I should focus with it. Because to be honest, I'm still a little bit undecided and I count on you all that are watching to help me out with that. So if you do, please Leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel to find out what exactly is that I'm planning for tomorrow. So, I'll see you guys then, and bye-bye.